I know it's already going to be a really, really long day. And, um, but we're starting with such a dhamakedar panel. Na? It says demystifying unicorns and all of that. So let's have a big round of applause because you have unicorns and unicorn makers on this panel right now. So a big, big round of applause. You know, um, I always wonder, 2021 was very interesting because every week as a journalist, it was interesting for me. I would get a note and I would know that either it's a big fundraise, like you have a Sunicon, or you have a unicorn. And now we have over 100 unicorns in India. And it's a great sense of pride. But it also means that, you know, the narrative is slowly changing today. Everyone was talking about growth. Everyone was talking about unicorns. Everyone was talking about the growing number of, you know, startups in India. But now everyone's suddenly talking. And it's cyclical. From what I see, have always seen it's cyclical. But today, everyone's talking about valuations. Are these the correct valuations? Profitability. Everything is being re-looked at. So how would you define the unicorn tag. And I want to start with the unicorns on this, uh, you know, panel on to, you know, how would you define this tag and what is your outlook for 2023 in your opinion? So should I go first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's overrated. Uh, I don't know how many people here understand Hindi, but like the unicorn ke sirpe seeing hota hai, the horn on the head of the unicorn is actually not on the head of the unicorn. Uh, that's what I can say. So I think it's, uh, it's one thing. Hi, Shraddha. How are you? <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> I think uh, it's a big responsibility. Uh, at times, it can lead to hubris. I don't know if you uh, if you know the historical context, but uh, you know, eventually, the mythical unicorn died because it uh, forgot its ferocity and went and sat in the lap. Uh, of the maiden that was put out there to lure the unicorn. So basically, if the unicorn fell for uh, a bait, a lure. And I think uh, that's the worry I have, that I don't want to go into the lap, so, you know, lap of the damsel and get trapped by that and die. So I think it's a bit of a double-edged sword. That's how right. I define it, yeah. Right. Pankaj, how do you see this tag? Look, uh, for me, uh, I feel that we are celebrating uh, a large success. Um, as we start building companies and they are fairly small, um, a lot of effort goes into building what we call as sectorial champions or national champions. And we have three of those uh, on the panel over here. Yeah. Um, building a large outcome is obviously something amazing and uh, should get celebrated. Um, and I feel that uh, being a unicorn in my mind is a milestone that some significant value has been created. Uh, that, of course, doesn't mean that it has been realized. It does not mean that more further milestones will not come. It is a milestone, but it's a good milestone. Right. And uh, Pranjal and Sahil, what's your view on this? Yeah, I think, uh, I think Pankaj said it. I think it, and Abhay also mentioned it. I think it's a responsibility. Um, it's also a tag which says, okay, now you are, have the potential to be a category leader. Um, I also think that uh, it's also a tag which says that, look, now, quote, unquote, the typical venture risk in the company has sort of gone, right? So now you are on a path to become a large, non-venture, more, you know, sort of, I wouldn't say stable, but, you know, uh, 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 the riskiness of mortality is now reduced, right? So all in all, I think it's obviously it's amazing. I would not shy away from saying that, look, it does give high to a lot of people in the ecosystem. Uh, it's also a cultural shift because it inspires other startup entrepreneurs to start seeing that journey, right? So it's also a cultural change that's happening in the, in the Indian ecosystem. So I, th I think it's exciting. Uh, it's a great milestone. It's a position of responsibility, but it's also it's at some level, I would say, validation mm. that you know the players have done their bit to now get away from the venture risk, and now they are on a path of a potential category leader. Right, right. Sahil, how do you view this? I think everyone's already covered most of the things. I, yeah. I do agree with Abhay uh, quite wholeheartedly. You know, when we turned Unicorn, it didn't change anything for us. Right? It was just it felt good, no doubt. But it was more external than internal. A lot of people saying congratulations. We're like, for what? 
I mean, we still have, for, for us, it's more about hitting our numbers and making that impact. But I think what, what is heartening to see for India overall is the ecosystem, right? I mean, when you look at capital and look at what capital is chasing now, what it's available for, and the fact that people are given that liberty to go and try these things. Uh, and you know, you used to read about China minting all these unicorns X years ago. I used to sit and wonder, when will this happen in India? Mein? You know, and when we went through these last two years, it was that to me was actually the big moment to say that, you know what, it doesn't matter. If you put a 20 year timeline, what matters is that there's all of this momentum happening here. And you know, we, we have to make sure we do our part. So I think that was the more exciting sort of takeaway. But other than that, it's, it's a tag. That's I it still is. remember very clearly to his point, ki, when we signed our unicorn term sheet, but that day, me and Vivek had like a, matlab, on some business matter, we like, you know, had a massive argument. It was a usual day at office. I went home, 9 o'clock, had dinner, and, you know, just before sleeping, I told my wife, by the way, you know, today we were, you know, we just signed our unicorn term sheet. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Just, just like said, exactly. I said, what's the big deal? Did you crazy? So then she forced me to pick up a bottle of whiskey, go to Vivek's house. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. So that's what I mean, you know, that paranoia. I mean, somehow at least, you know, yeah. we just, I think, look at it like that. <laughs> I, I know these guys and this guy. So some weight you have lost. Better yeah. half, better half I've lost. <laughs> Is, uh, uh, he was just staying one building away from me, so I know all his uh, secrets and everything. And Sahil, very good to see you. And Pankaj, uh, uh, very good to have you here. Pranjal, I can't pretend that I know you very, very well. So, uh, but you know, today at TechSparks, thank you to all of you for coming because it takes effort from all the busy unicornism that you're doing <laughs> to come. Unicornism. And, uh, and, and because in some way you're giving back, right? Like by coming, uh, you're giving back to everyone. And Pankaj, you've come from Delhi. Sahil, you've come uh, uh, from uh, Delhi. I want to ask all of you one question for the benefit, because these are all entrepreneurs here, is, uh, that what are one or two decisions that you have taken? Because you know we are every day bombarded with so many decisions. What are one or two decisions that you've taken which actually played a pivotal role in shaping the story that has worked out for you? Yeah, I mean, when I uh, think back, and like you said, we take thousands of these every day. Sahil, a second. You know, guys, bahut low energy lag raha hai. I think many itni tarif ki, they have come all the way to talk to all of us. Let's give a very, very big round of applause to all these entrepreneurs because we all know that it takes time and effort to come and give back. Matab, aisa kuch nahi ki, rupya bhi. I have come all the way from Indra Nagar. Oh, 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 oh. We'll make you sing for that. Sahil, yes. So I think. Uh, you know, in a very broad way, we pivoted two times in a major way, and micro pivoted many, many times. And um, by the second time, you know, most people told us that not 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 Pankaj, but a lot of other people. Um, and for us, what that taught us is why we failed earlier was too many S curves too early, Right? And we were trying to do too much for too many people and kuch bhi nahi ho tha basically. Mm. Ambition on a chi baat hai. But there has to be a stage, right? So I think one big thing was just shut everything else off. Make something small. Don't think big. I know it sounds very weird, but early stage, think small. Make a monolith, make an unscalable business, but make it good. So if you die, 100 people should be very unhappy. Right? Yeah. You make 1,000 people sort of unhappy, it's not worth it. So I think that learning for us was critical as you know, we narrowed down on ship rocket and said, yeah, okay, we'll build this and we'll build it really good. Fir chai, chote di company ban jai, it's okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that completely changed our thinking. And I think the other thing that, you know, we learned over a period of time is that at least for us, you know, we, for our DNA and for our, for us to feel uh, good about what we are doing, we don't like to scale without looking at what it means for the bottom line. So we end up doing sign, sign curves almost, where we'll, we'll hyperscale for like six to 12 months, then slow down and say, look, let me reflect back on what's happened, what's not. Try to re-hit sort of high profitability goals and then do it again. And it's quite tough hota hai because founders are in their mind, but as you become larger, 
right? Companies can't suddenly, like, you know, it, it's hard to yeah. suddenly say a U-turn marna hai se. People are getting, you know, ki abhi to hum grow, ha, ha, abhi kar rahe the, abhi karna hai. And I think, uh, but building that muscle very consciously and thinking about it every day, communicating to the team every day ki we are doing this. So people don't get confused ki achha, ye chal kya rahe. I think those two things, and not even now, I'm talking like when we were younger as well, I think those two things have really helped us, uh, you know, be who we are today. So focusing, not getting distracted, yeah. and keeping everyone on the same page, everyone in the team on the same page, so that there is no ambiguity, was just sure. communicating two things. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think we've spoken about this before. For me, it's uh, like unicorn or not. Uh, I think it's very important to choose who you want to start the journey with. Uh, I think that becomes almost yeah. mission critical. I think uh, the journey of entrepreneurship, if it's a solo pursuit, it's a lonely pursuit. Uh, so for me, I think the choice, almost obsessively sort of obsessing over co-founder and co-founding team is the single most important choice. And I think for me, uh, you know, that's number one. And number two, I think is the strong urge to build a very special company. Uh, that people can take a lot of pride in uh, versus, see, the idea of big oftentimes is, you know, is, is a great motivator for a bunch of folks. But the idea of special is sometimes, you know, doesn't pass the smell check of quote unquote, I mean, except Pankaj, you know, Pankaj is a great VC, but you know, most guys say, ki, okay, yaar, ye to, kitne billion dollar ka banega? Matlab to, that's the starting point, right? Versus, you know, can you really build a special organization? So I think that tremendous, deep, obsessive focus on wanting, a, wanting to build a special company where, where people almost every day wake up and say, yaar, iske liye to main jaan bhi de dunga. Hmm. I think then that sort of just sets off, you know, a, a mad movement. You know, then, then you are just, you know, you sit, sit back and, you know, wonder and, you know, and look at it in amazement to say, wow. You know, I think for both of us, Vivek and me, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's what it has really been about. Yeah. yeah. Look, so I have not been a founder. I've worked with founders. I've been an investor now, closely working with the founders. Sure. Uh, um, and I can understand the founder psyche. But I think if I look at Eruditus' journey, um, I think two, three things I would say were pivotal to where we are. I mean, when we invested, I mean, when I was with Pankaj and we invested, I think the company was just doing Series B and we are now you know, gone massive from there. One to Sahil and Abhay's point is mission. I think you have to be, remain true to the mission. And whatever initiatives you take, you have to always keep thinking, is it aligned with my mission? So that I think is very important because it helps you clarify what you have to do and what you don't have to do. And that mission then percolates down to the entire organization. So I think that is very important because you can get distracted. The other thing which I'll say is, uh, like Sahil said, get up your playbook right, and ek bar aapko playbook pil jai, then scale fast. So what Eruditus does, what it got the playbook right. We were offline till 2016. We did online 2017. We got the we tweaked the model of online, got it right in 2018, and then we knew, knew what the playbook was. And then we said, okay, India, US, Latin America, China, Middle East. Let's just start, you know, replicating that playbook. I think that that I think was pivotal for us. You know, just getting that playbook right first, and then able to execute and replicate it across multiple geographies. Uh, Pankaj, I'll ask you a different question. Yeah. Uh, uh, into your decision making, Abhi, to of course, it must be what a fantastic decision making <laughs> that all of them are unicorns. Uh, but you invested much, much, much before. Yeah. And this is for the benefit of all the entrepreneurs here, that if they have to come to you, Pankaj, to come to Bertelsmann, give us an insight into your uh, real decision making, what got you to invest in them? Sure. And how do you decide? So happy to happy to do that, and uh, again, multiple kind of factors go into making a decision, and uh, a few of them, as Series B investors, who we are, and that's our DNA, um, is that listen, let's go after a product which is really, really good. I mean, uh, Abhay talked about it, uh, Sahil talked about it. The product should make a difference in the lives of who is kind of who are consuming uh, those products, 
and uh, there should be a tangible difference versus uh, the product that you are selling versus what's there in the market, whether in the traditional sense or competition and so on. But at the same time, good unit, unit economics, good, uh, uh, you know, good uh, market size and so on. That's one set of criteria that we look at. The second set of criteria that we look at are actually the founding team. Very, very important for two reasons. Number one, is this a set of founder or founding team that can actually deliver or build a company which is worth a unicorn uh, or even bigger? And number two, would we as investors enjoy that journey with them? Um, our journeys with all of you guys have been what, almost like six to seven years now. And we think it will be another three, four, five years till we get exits, etc. In my mind, this is probably second to getting married. And if, and, I, and in fact, I call it as a professional marriage of, of sense, where we have to spend massive amount of time to with each other, a lot of highs, some lows also. And we can only work together very well provided there's a very strong sense of camaraderie that is kind of getting built in and we'd like to judge that. In fact, I've said no to a few deals in my life where everything else was going very well, but I felt that I would not be able to build a strong camaraderie with, with the set of entrepreneurs and that for us is very important. So do you guys eat chicken together for the camaraderie and for the... That's the, that's the least that, that, that we do. do. We, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of activities. We're playing snooker together Monday morning. Huh? We're playing snooker together snooker, Monday morning. Snooker, hiking. Badminton. I mean, this is professional marriage. Snooker, hiking, holidays, food, badminton, everything goes. Okay. Uh, again, kam karte is a separate topic, but <laughs> kabhi na kabhi kar lete kaam bhi. Now that you have said marriage, no marriage is an easy marriage. <laughs> All marriages are very difficult, so that's for a separate, uh, uh, you know, we'll take that separately, but. Uh, coming back, you know, and again, I'm just focusing this on for the benefit of all the entrepreneurs. Is you said, Sahil, that pehle hundred customers go create a wow, create a love, and then and focus. But the thing is that as entrepreneurs, when we are building our businesses, then we are also grappling when we go and meet an investor and we are selling our idea. Sab bolte hai, tam kya hai? Ye tam kya hai? और वहाँ पे अगर हम कहें कि सौ लोग को हम बेच रहे हैं और वो टाइम ढूंढ रहे हैं बिलियन लोगों का, how do you then address that dichotomy? तो I think एक तो बोल दो टाइम। हाँ? बोल दो ना टाइम कितना है? उससे फर्क नहीं पड़ता है। But at the same time, see if you are building something, this was our problem forever, right? हम छः साल से बोल रहे हैं D2C। Every investor told us ये क्या होता है? हम्म। सब कुछ Amazon पे होगा। ये क्या होता है? Right? And for us, I was like, if it hasn't happened yet, how do I tell you? So I think you have to find the right investor, I'll be honest, right? Um, and you can't say anything about it. And then you'll get the wrong investor. 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 Then it's quarter to quarter. So, that's okay. But the point is that, the point is you have to, uh, you have to believe in what you're doing. And, and you know, if it's not happened yet, then you say that. Right? You have to just convince somebody and they have to, you need only one guy, na? Yeah. You just need one person to believe in what you are saying. You don't have to convince everyone. So, and you do want somebody who's got high conviction. Otherwise, wo chalta nahi. and for us, we were very lucky and uh, to some extent by design that we only wanted people who understood this fully. If they didn't understand it, we don't want them. Because then, then it'll go into all kinds of directions, right, as a company. So I think TAM, potential hona, TAM ban jana over time, where can it go upsides hona, right? Adjacencies aati hai, right? Yeah. Like if they said we can go into 10 countries, they probably started with one city. So abhi when they started, they may say I'm going after this segment in such city and for two years I only want to do this. Then I can add more categories, I can go to more cities, I can go to more countries. Yeah. So that is a future yeah. TAM to some extent. I think just to add to what Sahil is saying, we as investors have also learned our lessons over the last 10 years and it has been an amazing journey. It's not that we knew all the answers on day one when we started our businesses. As, as you guys learned, we also learned. And probably half of the unicorns, we have over 100 plus unicorns, half of the unicorns, if they were to come to me at Series B, I would have probably said no to them for TAM. Hmm. Because at that time and looking back to 2012, 
when internet was just starting, we were not sure how big a lot of things will become. Yeah. It's only in hindsight today we can say, oh my goodness, what a great opportunity, right? Um, so we are also learning. And if 10 years back I would have said no to a deal for a restrictive TAM, today as Sahil is saying, I would look at adjacencies to say, listen, TAM is reasonable, not great, but are there segments where it can go if it were successful? If yes, then that benefit of doubt can be given by the investor and most of the investors are thinking like that. Yeah. थोड़ा सा structural issue भी I think India VC ecosystem में थोड़ा सा structural issue है मतलब see there are people who have a vision let's say foresight but mostly Indian VCs are not entrepreneurs themselves आप समझ रहे हो तो वो professional हैं उनको किसी ने textbook पढ़ाई है playbook ये China वाली है ये tech वाली है ये consumer वाली है ये logistics वाली है इसको ऐसे देखना भाई ऐसे ऐसे कर लेना अगर end में ये result आ गया तो done है मोटा मोटी that's the problem अगर आप, you know, I still remember my conversation with one of the very big private equity guys, और उनके ऑफिस में ना हमारी humiliation हुई थी, मतलब जिसको बोलते हैं कि, और उन्होंने हमको convince कर दिया था कि unless you have only one SKU, you are finished and Amazon will build this. पहला, the other was कि, you know, the same person, by the way, you know, said कि there will be a day very soon that the rich people of Bangalore will stop buying you, okay? And then you will run out, you know, because who wants to pay 40 bucks on those days? 40 rupees kaun deta hai chicken ke? Chicken to chicken hai. Well, that was his own imagination. And believe me, this guy had by then minted many unicorns. So that was the baggage. Now, you know, to some entrepreneurs, that can be the, you know, death's kiss yeah. in that meeting. You can actually walk out of that meeting to say, man, I'm kya kar raha so yeah. I think this is the issue, that if the venture capitalists of India are ex-entrepreneurs, then I think they will be with this intuition. I mean, a bunch of it then will not be in hindsight, it can be in foresight. So, so I think the answer to the TAM question really, you know, comes from a deep founder. I mean, then you are also going to be going to the road today, you are not going to be able to do a bicycle. छोड़ो इलेक्ट्रिक कार, so I think वो तभी there are only a few entrepreneurs and billions of consumers, right? Yeah, you know, but what अब है what we are also listening and Sahil what you're saying is that you will hear all kinds of points of views, but at the end of the day how you are अपने अंदर वो स्थिरता, stillness and conviction and that will get tested, so it is going to get tested and Pankaj what you're also saying is that there is an evol evolution or evolvement in the VC community also that we are not looking at the playbooks or we are not because we are also figuring the market along with the entrepreneurs. Yeah, 100%. Uh, in fact, if I look at how startup or VC ecosystem is getting built, we were looking at, uh, you know, the Amazon of ABC. We were looking at the Ubers of ABC. We were looking at benchmarks in the West. And then when we look at now businesses, whether it's uh, OU and Trebos of the world, whether it's agri-tech with a lot of fintech stuff, which is getting innovated in India for the first time. Even Shiprocket, we don't have, we, when you guys started, you didn't have a comparable uh, for you guys. In fact, the, at Licious also, you didn't have a comparable. Uh, these are homegrown examples without comparables in the West. Taking a punt on these is difficult, but I would say you have to look at fundamental views to say, is there a need for such businesses? And as more VCs take such punts, we will start mimicking what happened in Silicon Valley probably 30, 40 years back. That's the mindset that will come in, uh, which I think is coming. Also, a lot of entrepreneurs are becoming VC. Look at uh, uh, Kunal and so on. Yesterday he was uh, here. Yeah, yeah, he was here. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, VCs are becoming operators like Pranjal here. So I think that there's a good, uh, uh, you know, osmosis uh, happening between the ecosystems and that itself will result with hopefully good entrepreneurs or better entrepreneurs and better investors. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting that Pankaj has said. I mean, Abhi Pankaj recently, you know, last one year, many of my VC friends have shared with me, you know, one guy in Brazil wrote, wrote to him saying, ki, hey, I've heard you are an investor in Licious. We are building the Licious of Brazil. Yeah, somebody yeah. says, I'm building the Licious, you know, of uh, Pakistan. Also, somebody reached out to me. I was like, dude. So I think, you know, this is interesting, right? So now we are also giving playbooks books to the world. And I think that's the big sort of change. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, one other question that I want to ask all of you, again, for the benefit, as we are building our businesses, and you've reached a certain milestone, you've reached a certain scale, reaching, I don't, is hard, but maintaining that place, that position is harder because a lot of eyes are on you now. A lot of expectations are there that comes with scale. How, what is the mental model? What are some of the processes that you follow to, you know, to every day be on that lead? What are you doing the processes? What are the ways? I think it's called overthink. The moment you start looking at it like this, I can't do it. And I, I don't the, think you such, can... Such, such thinking, you know, because when we go back after this event is over, when we go back to our businesses, we'd love to hear from you that what are some of the things you do? I think there's a little discipline or uh, less of the, uh, you know, trial and experiment that you do much more when you're smaller, and you can, and you should. Um, and I do think predictability of the business, you know, you're able to hire, you have teams then, right, to do it who are better than you in many things that, that you weren't. So to a large extent, like we talk about the financial side of the, the, you know, the finance function of our company, um, or the strategic functions in the company, it starts to become much more, uh, much more structured, let me put it this way. But that is part of the journey. I don't think you don't do it as a, you know. Planning. Yeah, well, you reach here because you did that. Yeah. It's almost like that, right? And then it is, it is important for at least the founder, CEO to start constantly thinking about uh, uh, you know, how predictable is the business. And I think to your point, that is a change. So I think two years ago, even, you know, board aside, for the founder also, it's like, okay, I'm trying. One month I could be like this, another month I'll be like this, because I'm so, so young right now. Yeah. But as you have big scale, uh, predictability starts to become important, even for the founder. I think, uh, I think um, some things continue and some things change. So for example, um, and I've seen this, you know, again, in founders, in, in leadership of these companies, uh, our own company. A, you start to think more medium to long term. Mm. Because as I said, you have now have teams firefighting daily things. Yeah. But if you step back five years, I'm sure, you know, all of these guys were rolling up their sleeves, you know. So that's one thing that changes. And founders also evolve. They start to think more medium to long term. So that's one. The second thing is, I think it becomes important as a responsibility to start ensuring that the governance of the company is now better. And when I say governance, I mean stakeholder communication, investor communication, team communication, right? Because when you're a founder, you're more like a, you know, you're like, you're like a maverick who is sort of, you know, doing things alone, but now you have a setup. So I think that, that, that is important and that mindset shift is important. Uh, the third thing is, and we have this sort of thought process in our companies, a three box thinking, right? Where box one is saying, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing something, and this is going good, so we need to accelerate. Box two is saying, historically, we've been doing these things, now we need to kill them, mm. forget doing them. And then box three is, what is the new thing, which jokingly we all of us call S-curve, <laughs> <laughs> in our parlance. So what is that new S-curve? You know, that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that will be launching, right? Because of the medium long term. Yeah. So I think wo ek clarity in the thought process. Mein, and in the leadership team, kya, this is what we have to accelerate, this is what we have to kill, and this is what I think is, is happening. So those, those are, th are things, some of the things. Last thing I'll say, talent. Trust me, talent for a company which is a unicorn or tagged as a unicorn is much more important than talent early on because now, Founders can't do everything else. You have to start delegating. Your team has to do it. So you need to have that, you know, top layer, which is very, very, you know, sharp and very. So that I think is becomes even more important when you are at at this stage. Yeah. yeah. In my mind, just a couple of more things which become important. I think as you sort of grow up, sometimes growth can take you by surprise. Also, you know, so oftentimes our business plans and our reality is very different. So. What happens is the hardware and the software of the company doesn't match. Mm. The external view of the company, see, you look at Licious, you know, two years ago, Shraddha, when we were crowned whatever unicorn, you know, we could barely believe it, right? Yeah. Because as an organization to be a 
you know, at that time, a billion dollar company, we also felt, yeah, we must have, also feel like we deserve being there apart from being there, you know, given that tag by an investor. So I think this whole organizational readiness to sort of really mature up and grow into constantly justifying your valuation comes from almost a daily discipline, which is the operating rigor in the company. I think that companies are so founder and founder dependent that wo founder intuition, founder gut, founder operating forums. Pe chalti hai. But there is no real operating system in the organization. And that somewhere is also to do with the talent issue that he spoke about. And also founders not letting go, wanting to be on top, wanting to be on top. So I think since we're talking to a set of folks yeah. who may want to know, I think it's important to realize the need for, for good talent and then trusting them to install the right governance and, and operating system. And I think second most important thing is communication. I think the organization will go through good times, bad times, the muted times. In that time, I think what really, the system that really works is a simple rigor of, you know, a 15, every 15 day town hall. You know, get people to talk to you, talk to people. I think these are just additional things. An operating system, constant communication. I think it can give you a lot of flex and then you can think about S curves, you know, uh, <laughs> so yeah. So S curve is the word, but thank you for so uh, honestly uh, uh, sharing the learnings because this is what we need. Uh, this is what, what we need when we have people like you building it and you are in the trenches taking all the bullets and also all the flowers and bouquets of being a unicorn, the tag uh, that is there. You know, some, do you feel sometimes scared with that tag? Or you're both kush hota, both pride hota that oh, I am the unicorn, like I'm the hundred unicorns of India. Kuch kuch nahi hota hai, shraddha, tum nahi sunjo ki. Kuch nahi hota hai. I mean, look, for me and Vivek, I think, uh, see, the meat industry of India had a bad name, you know, yeah. it was in a kali theli, right? So meat eaters were called non-vegetarians, you know? So I think for me and Vivek, I think the great thing is that ye, ये बिस्लेरी देखो मतलब यहाँ पे है मतलब आप किसी भी बोतल पे देखो कोई भी स्टिकर लगा दो people think it's बिस्लेरी I think because yeah, Licious has the opportunity to create something as meaningful as this yeah. right and it is going on that path I think that unicorn tag is actually a validation of that cat कि look look at us yeah. we did it yeah. and you know what we are going to surprise the hell out of everybody with what we'll actually be able to achieve so I think this is a great sort of morale booster on that path, not so much for the founders, but the bunch of people who are operating with the founders because getting the first, you know, after the first 50 guys who are generally mad, who don't join you for salary, getting the next 50 and so on and so forth, people were so hard for us because people said, who is going meat company? Who is going to meat company? Who is going to meat company? Who is going to company? Who is going to meat 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 company? What it does for the larger ecosystem, communication, narrative, and the industry, I think that's the biggest plus of the unicorn tag. And for that, I think we must totally live it up, but you know, not allow that to sort of become your alternate reality. Yeah, yeah. And Pankaj, I will I like you to have the last word because all of us as uh, uh, entrepreneurs are looking at capital, and there is supposedly a funding winter, and this winter. Uh, we are told is not going away. In fact, yesterday someone said that world war is coming, a lot of doom and gloom is coming. If we have to get money from you first, do we have to be Series B or do we, can it be Series A? Uh, what Series needs to come to you and how can we reach out to you? So I think selectively we do Series A. Um, and uh, of course, Series B is our bread and butter, which is basically companies with, let's say, about three, four million, if not $5 million of top line and so on. Having said that, uh, just kind of zooming back, while there's a win uh, funding winter across the globe, and it is quite real, um, there is also a lot of dry powder that has been raised by various venture capital funds for India, specifically. So while the entire world will be in a very difficult position, raising extremely large rounds might be slightly challenging, uh, raising seed, series A, series B rounds are not very difficult. They are still happening. Valuations have corrected. I, I'm not saying they have gone down because as investors, I thought they had gone a little crazy in the last two, three years, so they have corrected. They have come to a sensible level. 
and uh, we are open for business so all the great ideas great entrepreneurs who are looking at kind of building businesses reach out to us our emails are there and uh, happy to talk to them and also a lot of other investors that when we talk to them at series a series b they are open for business yeah. so i think in general we are at a good spot india as a country we are at a good spot and uh, we should enjoy the moment and continue to work hard yeah yeah Thank you so much. Thank you uh, to all of you. And again, I want to go and go on record to say that taking out time to talk and give back to entrepreneurs is a very, I think it's a responsibility of all the entrepreneurs. And, and, and doing that means a lot. It talks about the leaders that you are. Thank you, Sahil. Thank you, Pranjal. Thank you, Abhay. We, we don't have time. Otherwise, I would have asked you to sing. And Pankaj, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you and Sindhu, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for just being, uh, just coming and taking over. Thank, thank you. Being there always. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you.